Kiev's deadline for the armed protesters in eastern Ukraine to stand down came and passed with little fanfare. Now the government has made good on its threat. Sunday, Ukraine's acting president issued an ultimatum for the protesters demanding closer ties with Russia, disarm or deal with Ukraine's armed forces. The protesters pretty much ignored that deadline. Monday, armed men were still occupying government buildings in Horlivka, Donetsk and Slavyansk. By Tuesday, Kiev had launched a so-called anti-terrorist operation, deploying troops to rein in the armed men. Now, you'll hear these men called different things depending on where you live. Russian news outlets are using terms like anti-fascist freedom fighters to describe them. But in the Western media, they're being referred to as pro-Russian separatists or militants, likely working with the support of Moscow. Kiev accuses Russia of orchestrating the unrest in eastern Ukraine and fears the clashes could serve as a pretext for invasion. Russia is believed to have tens of thousands of troops stationed along Ukraine's eastern border, ready to move within 12 hours. Russia insists the troops are there strictly for military exercises. A correspondent for Time says Ukraine is left in a difficult position when dealing with the protesters. Continued lack of military response could embolden pro-Russia groups, but an armed crackdown could prompt the invasion of Russian troops. But a New York Times columnist argues the West has it all wrong. Russia's endgame is influence in eastern Ukraine, not invasion. It wants Kiev to adopt a federal system of government, giving far more power to the governors across Ukraine. The White House says President Obama asked President Vladimir Putin in a phone call Monday to withdraw Russian troops from the border and use his influence to get the separatists to back down. For his part, Putin denied any Russian interference in Ukraine. For Newsy, I'm Elizabeth Hagedorn.